Hey everyone, what's up? This is Uri for Gorilla Poker. In this video, I want to fulfill a viewer request. I don't know if you expected this to be in video form, but I was asked what I thought of Charlie Carroll's latest 100 and a live play vid. And I didn't know, I hadn't watched it. I do like Charlie's approach in general. I think he's a very creative, out of the box player and that his success kind of shows you that you don't have to play the same as everyone else. But obviously I'm not going to agree with everything he does. I think we, we do approach the game similar but different. So I'm going to have this muted and, and just some text. So here Charlie flats king queen offsuit small blind versus MP and he says loose but we have an edge post flop. And I would tend to say, you know, Charlie's playing this spot intuitively. And I doubt he's done much research on the rake structure at NL100. And this is maybe one of the spots where we can talk about the DNA of poker, because I agree with what Charlie's saying. This is too loose, and we do have an edge post flop. I mean, definitely Charlie does. I don't know why in a live play video you would use that as an excuse to make a bad play, because the people watching don't necessarily have an edge. And they can't make the same play. And then as far as educational content, I wouldn't recommend this. Charlie is way above an NL100 level. So he's going to run circles around these guys. And you want to see him doing that. But accurate preflop plays is super important. And I think Charlie's edge, if I had to guess, I'm not sure it makes up for the rake. I'm not sure this spot is plus EV. It might be more marginal than he thinks. It might be slightly losing. And these are really like, Tiny technical nuances where, you know, if Charlie, this was his main stake, I'm not sure he should be doing this. It's obviously not a big deal and it's a video, but I think it's important to mention that for whoever is watching. This is too loose. You shouldn't do this. There is a difference between 2.5x, 2.1x, 2x, break structures. Like, just don't do this. If you're a high stakes player playing low stakes, whatever, but guys, don't do this. We'll start with that. So yeah, he checks ace, jack seven. We'll try to, to keep the rest of the hands short or commentary, but I feel like that's important to say. Third pot from his opponent and Charlie decides to min raise. And just pausing to say, you know, this is a kind of play I'm guessing Charlie is doing very intuitively. You guys probably know I have a course about check raising. I understand how check raise sizings work on a deep level. And, you know, this is a thing. <laughs> this is okay. There's an idea behind it and there's logic behind it of going this tiny sizing. In, and I have a feeling Charlie gets that on some intuitive level. I don't know if he can explain it. This isn't necessarily the thing I would do. It's not necessarily a high frequency thing. But when you check raise this small, any size you take is denying equity from a part of your opponent's range. On ace high boards, there are not many, many in between hands. So this would fit, I, I would say, not ace jack seven. I think this is not the right size for this board. Because in these positions, your opponent's going to have lots of pairs and lots of gut shots and lots of backdoor draws, and it's a bit too small. But if, if the board were more bricky, like an ace-9-3, this would be the kind of size where you check raise and your opponent looks at, at king-jack and he's like, oh, what do I do now? It's good in, in some spots. I would say it's not appropriate for this specific texture and position pair. Now, deeper than that is how your opponent's going to respond to it. And I think... Charlie's style, and we'll keep the video running, a lot of it is, is just messing with people and putting them in spots where they don't know, they don't know their range, maybe they give away some information, like how much time is it taking his opponent to call, Charlie probably has a lot of experience doing this. Will people fast play their good hands? Because if they fast play all their good hands, then his turnover bet is great, etc. So, yeah, I think this is, a, again, with no explanation, you can't really do anything about it. But I'm sure Charlie's not, not clicking buttons as much as, as it seems. He's more messing with people in, in that hand. Okay, so six is let's pause because there is text. So he's saying, I'd see bet without a heart, but with this hand, we can call hard turns. 
this is an example uh, for me of, like I said, Charlie gets things intuitively. I, I'm not sure he necessarily understands exactly why he has an idea why it's similar to reality and, and the, the big picture is he he's doing good things like this is a hand that can check back you can also check back with no heart and this kind of I'll, I'll see bet without a heart but this hand we can call heart turns is a simplification that doesn't have real strategic merit in a vacuum like that's not a reason I would say there's a difference between sixes with and without a heart. With a heart has higher equity. Higher equity means if you bet and get called, you're doing better. So that makes it more of a protection bet than sixes with no heart. And yeah, basically you just want to mix these things up. It's not very important. And here, I said Charlie has his logic, but it's not important logic for you guys to get like do whatever you want with sixes and it's not important but yeah he checks back he calls the turn bet and, and here charlie is reading into every little detail guys with the the timings and the sizes but yeah his opponent bets wherever he makes the flush and calls i think you can ask yourself why did you snap call why did charlie snap call and and, and I'm, I'm guessing there is a reason because if you think about it that was actually just a bluff catcher. Maybe you think your opponent's bluffing with a heart and then it's not that easy. But Charlie is, like, like I said, he's thinking about these things deeper. There's a timing, there's a turn sizing. There's the fact that with a high heart that his opponent is representing with a big river bet, would he actually have bet the turn his size and then which hands is that, etc. So it's like there's a ton going on in terms of of what he's thinking and, and this is I think why I'm saying Charlie's a good player because I can see this stuff going on like he's he's thinking about the game in a complex way so here that the hand is good enough to flat unlike the king queen off from before uh, I would still recommend three betting it most of the time and he's saying here let's maximize versus two pairs that's a lot of their range when they go this size into two players and uh, I agree. I think what Charlie's doing is, is hand reading fairly well and basing his sizes off of that. And this is a lot of his post flop edge in lower stakes, where, you know, these guys are doing something that's kind of face up to him, but the way he reacts isn't face up to them. So it's kind of an unfair fight. As your opponents get better, uh, they become less face up and you become more face up. So these kind of things work up to a point and, and versus certain players and, and at low stakes they work extremely well for what it's worth. Pause to talk about King Queen suited. So Charlie C bets, his opponent calls and then his opponent donks the turn and Charlie is saying Fuck GTO, let's make him fold everything but a nine. And then doing a play that's probably a GTO play. So, Charlie, I mean, it's a cool play. I like it. Well played. Like I said, respect your game. I'm not sure you understand enough GTO. You play a lot of spots really well in terms of GTO. You just have very, very good intuition. So don't disrespect GTO in this sense. But yeah, I like the play. And I would guess it, it's probably a GTO play. You need a bluff raising range. Right, you're not gonna freeze up because he has a few trips. You can still stack off fairly wide, just because the nine pair doesn't mean, you know, you're not shoveling in money with kings. And then, which hands do you want to bluff? You know, is it king queen or not? In in this sense, maybe GTO would say not king queen, but I, I have a feeling it would say yes, king queen. It, it, if if we're being honest, I, I think it's a good candidate. Usually, bluffs come from low down in your calling range so you can take trash because trash has to fold and since king queen is like a borderline call it's a fine bluff right makes sense so ace queen he, he reads the guy perfectly gets called by the two pair here he's calling a three bet loose but who likes folding i mean fa fair play it's a video i fold but yeah, probably not a winning call. The 
Again, 200 deep, a lot of guys don't have experience. I'm sure Charlie has and has done plenty of out of the box stuff. He decides to trap the turn. I guess I'd say I'm not the biggest fan of that. And then calls the pot bet on the river. Again, very accurate river call the hand is, is almost certainly not good enough to raise, but I would guess the turn trap is, is not very GTO, should be low frequency, and, and I have a feeling it's not kind of metagame good in the sense that like that turn trap might be good against someone like Charlie, but I don't think it's good against the average 100 and I'll guy. There aren't like river check raises or huge over bets going on. So, so I would say probably don't trap. Like I'm not a fan. Here King 9, you see Charlie going small flop, 3x pot the turn. Is this GTO or not? I mean, it's, it's probably fine. I, I think it's just fine. But uh, and again, to, to Charlie's credit, uh, it's not a size that's often used. I'm sure he's winging it and he's not doing it from a GTO perspective. It's just so huge. People are going to react. And I'm guessing Charlie knows how to anticipate that fairly well. Where, you know, when you go 3x pot on a turn, what's your opponent doing with King Jack or Queen Jack? Is he calling too much or folding too much? And, and those kinds of things are going to determine whether this is good as a bluff or not. And again, do you want to follow through on random rivers or not? And I think there is a chance uh, that what Charlie is planning here is he's just saying, you know what, you would 3-bet jacks and 10s, you would check-raise jack 10 and 5s. So, you know, calling down 6s is, is not enough, and let's see if you're ever willing to bluff catch for stacks. And, and the answer is probably not. So he's just going like, boom, boom, challenge you to ever call me down. Might just be a good play, exploitatively speaking. It's fine to do GTO, but I'm sure this is not this is not a randomized decision. This is Charlie saying, you know, I, I think I'm getting the faults. Similar to King Queen, where he does probably a GTO raise, but I'm, I'm sure the frequencies are off and he just likes the spot. So Charlie's thinking a lot about do I like or dislike the spot in, in these kind of situations. Yeah, so 4-5 suited 3-bet, he gets a board, he should probably see bet always and checks back, which is, again, fine. I think it, it's cool to mix it up, put your opponent at, uh, into weird spots, call the turn with a flush draw, villain checks, and here Charlie goes, I think, with a very very good, very reasonable sizing, and, and you can see the, the reason uh, here. Would you bluff big or small? He prefers risking less when he has near zero bluffs in his perceived range. And I always think about these spots differently. I always think about the value range. Value range would be having an ace. And if I have an ace, these four to a straight boards are funny in that we both have the nuts a lot. Both ranges have the nuts a lot. So even though you have the nuts, if you bet huge, you just get called by chop. So you have to size down and down and down. And there's a sweet spot that makes sense for value. I'm guessing it's roughly in the ballpark of what Charlie bet. So to me, the bet size makes sense, but from the, the value perspective rather than the bluff perspective. But yeah, I think a well-played hand. Here, Charlie going with an, another cool exploitative play, goes check check, checks the turn, his opponent bets one big blind and Charlie's being like, you know, a, a machine might balance call downs or balance the sizings, but really there's a human betting one big blind there and, and ever not falling to a huge race. And the answer, you know, with no history is going to be no, unless you watch Charlie's videos and know him a bit. So again, risk reward that needs to work like 80% of the time or so, and it probably works more. And we will have to uh, wrap up here. Unfortunately, can't get through the rest of the video on this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think. Thank you, Charlie, for the video, and I'll see you guys next time.